Welcome everyone, I'm Jen Hamrick. I'm the Integrated Health and Justice Administrator with Ramsey County. Really excited about this opportunity to tell you all about our appropriate responses initiative ERI. At Ramsey County, we have a strategic priority around putting community and wellness at the center of justice system transformation. So our appropriate responses initiative, ARI, is one of the areas where we're really building around that. Within the appropriate responses initiative, we're creating new resources to be able to provide support to people when they call 911, to be able to meet the complex needs that we know people have for support. We've been working on building this program for the past several years with folks at this table, people across Ramsey County, as well as our community members. We went through a process in early 2022 to co-design what this work would look like with systems partners and community members working side by side for several months to really build the design of what are the new responses that we need to really meet the vast needs within the community. We heard from community members that the current traditional responses that we had of police, fire, and emergency medical services weren't meeting all of the needs that they were seeing in the community. We heard from our partners here in the Emergency Communication Center who was taking the 911 calls that they felt like there needed to be more resources to be able to more appropriately meet the needs of the callers. And we also heard from our partners in law enforcement and fire that they wanted some additional tools and support, recognizing that they didn't have in-depth training on a lot of the types of calls that they were being asked to go out and respond to. Through this collaborative work, we built the model that we're here to talk with you more today of having social workers embedded here in the Emergency Communication Center, additional crisis capacity for responses, as well as a new public health response team, and coming soon, a community response team. And so I'll hand it over to Director Nancy Pass of the Emergency Communication Center to talk a little bit about the work that happens here at 911. Thank you, Jen. We are proud of our newly remodeled Emergency Communication Center, which is the largest public safety communication center in the state of Minnesota. We became the largest center 17 years ago when St. Paul, Maplewood, and Ramsey County Sheriff's Office Communication Centers consolidated into one center. In 2018, White Bear Lake Dispatch consolidated into our center as well. And in 2019, the State Fair Dispatch operations were consolidated into Ramsey County. We currently serve every community in the county, and in 2023, we processed over 975,000 phone calls, and of those, over 380,000 were 911 calls. As the community needs evolved, so must we. So that focus remained at the forefront of this remodel project. In adding additional consoles, including space for our embedded social workers, and having dedicated public safety dispatchers for large events such as our Minnesota State Fair, we can continue to be efficiently and effectively responsive, sending the most appropriate response when possible. We intentionally place the social workers in the middle of the room, allowing for easier collaboration in real time as the calls are coming in. Additionally, with employee engagement and decision making throughout the entire design process, we were able to create a more modern and comfortable work environment for our dedicated staff who work 12 hour shifts, 24-7, uh, 365. We were committed to making updates that mattered to our employees, grouping similar job roles closer to each other, and improved soundproofing on the walls and on the ceilings. And of course, not compromising in any of our service levels to the community that they rely on us for. This has truly been a project of meeting the needs of others residents and employees, which only better, betters Ramsey County as a whole. Next, you'll hear from Deputy Director Sophia Thompson. I'll talk a little bit about our embedded social workers. Our embedded social workers have a social science background. For example, that would be social work, maybe they're mental health practitioners, mental health professionals. They're trained in de-escalation. They also have foundational crisis and telecommuter, telecommunicator training. So they really are the best of both worlds. Calls have been transferred to the crisis team since 2016 in anticipation of the Travis Law that came um, later. By embedding social workers into the call center, we are able to build on this work, focusing on really building relationships. 
We have seen an increase in confidence and trust in the two professions by embedding them into one location in the center of the floor. Now, our mental health, um, our, our social workers, they are responding to substance-related or mental health calls. Staff are able to spend more time with the caller, asking more details about the situation. They will gain information about the location, the type of substance, the, maybe the mental health diagnoses, if there's a weapon, any history of violence, additional information to assess what is the best response. For our youth, they may also ask if they're seeking um, resources. The staff do this and they're able to glean the urgency of the mental health situation and triage appropriately back to the ECC staff at any time. We have four staff covering seven days a week, but it isn't a 24 hour program, excuse me, a 24 by seven program at this time. The shifts are staggered, so there are a few gaps, but we do um, cover seven days a week. In addition to the embedded social workers who are here at the 911 call center, we also have increased capacity in our crisis staff. Um, in our, excuse me, in our crisis staff. Those team members, we added additional seven staff, and they are able to go out and meet the community in the need of a crisis response. Their role is to conduct a crisis assess assessment, create safety plans, navigate resources, and assess the most appropriate level of care, which sometimes may need um, hospitalization or uh, transport um, assistance. Teams typically go out in pairs as much as possible, and they um, continue to work with the traditional crisis response. I will share that in 2016, the calls that were transferred from 911 to the crisis team was about 263. Since then, in 2023, we've transferred over 3,491 calls from 911 to our crisis team. Thank you, Sophia. Um, good morning, I'm Sarah Holly, Director of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health. Um, Public Health is proud of this partnership. Um, being a part of the Appropriate Respo Response Initiative and our role in the expanded 911 response options. This is not a traditional response like the emergency medical services that are provided in our county, but a systems response based in the Public Health Department. Public health responders have different experiences, education, um, they have focuses on harm reduction, safe use education, and also access to resources. Currently, um, there are three public health responders here in Ramsey County as a part of the Appropriate Response Initiative that can be dispatched through the ECC for non-emergency calls to 911 involving substance use that are not overdoses, that are not medical emergencies, and where there is no weapon involved. Our public health team is responding in both public and private spaces in Maplewood, Moundsview, New Brighton, and Shoreview. And we are looking forward to Vadness Heights and Little Canada joining the pilot on May 28th, along with other cities within the county that are expected to join soon. We are really excited about hiring additional ARI public health responder staff in this space to, ex to support the expansion of this effort in other Ramsey County cities. Public health responders currently work shifts Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. in community. Our public health responders carry equipment which includes the computer-aided dispatch system, also known as CAD, and a mobile, which is a mobile laptop, and a combined radio and cell phone um, for the calls that they're receiving um, from the embedded social worker in 911. Public health responders are trained in models of harm reduction, they receive training from our mental health crisis team and have participated in the Emergency Call Center Academy. Our responders carry a backpack filled with supplies, including bandages, rubber gloves, puncture-proof gloves, naloxone, and safe use supplies, and more. To date, we've had around 10 calls that have been transferred to the public health responders that are in community. We know that soon that call volume will increase over time as more cities um, are added to our um, program. 
Some example calls that the team would respond to would include substance use related welfare checks. Um, public bathrooms where um, we know people are sometimes um, utilizing substances, um, open use in public, um, encampment substance calls, um, Ramsey County service center calls, calls from service centers to the ECC or calls directly to the ECC, um, youth substance disorder, calls in public spaces, I as I mentioned earlier, calls from businesses, um, of course, um, we have the ability, due to our harm reduction work that we're experts at, to also dispose of any sharps that we find in community. Um, and of course, paraphernalia disposal, which we can do um, um, at our clinic 555 here in downtown St. Paul. Calls placed by a treatment facility and resource calls, as mentioned earlier, that, you know, if someone is in need of help. Our public health responders um, can request officer support when needed and officers can contact our public health responders and community by sending a CAD message to a specific responder. Our team is also doing tons of outreach in community and are building relationships with community partners and also internal de departments to make those connections to services when residents are in need of help of reaching these resources. Thank you. I'll turn it over to back to Jen. Thank you, Director Holly. So in addition to what you've just heard around the things that we have already implemented and are currently active, the next step in our appropriate responses initiative is our community response capability. With this, we're gonna be partnering with a community-based agency to hire community responders and to support those individuals that will be directly dispatched from the Emergency Communications Center. We've issued a request for proposals for this work and we're currently in the evaluation and contract and negotiation process to pick which organization or organizations we will partner with. Community responders will be another countywide resource available to all of Ramsey County that will be responding to calls related to juveniles, uh, conflict, negotiation, as well as calls around upkeep to, to property or issues that individuals are having with their neighbors, as well as calls to schools, rec centers, and other public spaces like community centers. Our goals are really that once we have all of these responses fully active across Ramsey County, that we'll be able to see movement with some of our long-term outcomes, really centering black and American Indian individuals and communities that we know have a disproportionate engagement currently with the justice system. So through the work of the Appropriate Responses Initiative, we are aiming to see less black and American Indian individuals engaged in the justice system, incarcerated and financially obligated to the justice system, as well as to increase community wellness across the county. And so with that, we would love to answer any questions that you have for us about this transformative work. Can you tell me how, and I'm not familiar with how 988 might or might not work within CC and how that's navigated? Thanks for the question. So 988 works with our crisis team pretty closely. They're able to transfer calls. And so while the crisis team is not located here, there is immediate communication access that can happen between the two entities. And so um, the county crisis team is um, able to get those calls from 988. They don't come, 988 calls don't come in here though. That goes separate. That's correct. Okay. How is staffing and how do you navigate that across? I mean, I know there's a lot of different buckets here, but just in general, staffing and demand, you talk about that volume increasing for crisis calls and, and just across the board, just curious. Thank you for the question. So how do we navigate the increase in the calls and our staff capacity? So I can speak specifically to public health. We're actually adding three additional community health workers to be a part of this response due to the anticipation of additional calls coming in um, from the ECC and embedded social workers to public health. So that's one way that we're staying ahead of, of this and also hiring a, a permanent supervisor for that team because we're, we're building the work and we know that we need the capacity to be able to respond to calls. 
Uh, thank you for the question. Our staffing level at this moment, we're about, about 12%. Uh, we do have uh, 12 other employees coming in the next month that will be new hires. Uh, we also increased by six telecommunicators to uh, also help triage those calls. Uh, through the appropriate response initiative. And we also included two administrative uh, planning assistants to assist us with the work as well. And I can just add on to that. So across kind of all of these different spaces for ARI, we have a total of 32 new positions that we've added to make sure that we're able to have capacity in these spaces to not only take the calls, respond, and to also help with some of the planning pieces. We also have support from other folks around the county who aren't paid in those 32 positions. So overall, we have a team of over 70 people from across the county who are contributing and adding capacity to this work to make sure we're able to successfully move it forward. How have you seen demand change in, in the lab, like, I don't know, since just prior to the pandemic maybe? I don't know if it's in measures of volume or whatever. And have you seen a difference with 988 coming online in terms of demand on 911 or emergency calls? Thank you for the question. Um, you know, I would have to say that we have seen an increase in mental health related calls. Um, I'm not exactly, I can't define how the difference between 988 coming on board. They do great work. We collaborate with them on a very regular basis. Um, so I, I would say that I'm not sure what their call volume was prior to, um, but I would say we have seen an increase in volume since 2020, actually. So when you look at our call volume stats from 2020 to, to today, um, the increase is there across the board with all different types of calls. And that would be 2020 is obviously kind of a, an odd time. So, like prior to the pandemic, too, it's up since then. Or? I would say it's it's coming back to the numbers that we were seeing prior to the pandemic. Okay. Yeah. You consulted with the public when you developed this plan and the system. Can you talk about that process? Was that like did you have to go out into the public and, and the area to, to talk with people? Were there meetings? How did that all go down exactly? Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate the question about kind of the process and how we engaged community and the public in this work. So initially we put out a solicitation asking for community members across the county who might be interested in helping us to build out this work and got over 200 applications in and had to make some hard decisions to select kind of the 10 people who would sit in these planning spaces, recognizing that we had a lot of work we had to do, a lot of relationship building we had to do and couldn't have you know hundreds of people in a room for some of those spaces so we had 10 community members that came into what we called our co-design space where we co-created and co-designed with those community members and system stakeholders in those spaces we were meeting twice a week for several months and heard presentations from some of the folks sitting here as well as other subject matter experts both in the system and the community around how our, how's the current system working? What's currently happening in the emergency communication center? What is crisis currently looking like? What is the community experience with these services? And what are the gaps that community was experiencing at that time? We took all of that information and created this model and kind of all of the pieces that we're talking about here, we reached consensus with this group. So if any more than two people disagreed with an aspect of the model, we didn't move that forward from there recognizing that just 10 people cannot speak on behalf of all of the residents of Ramsey County. We have continued to do deep community engagement to make sure that community continues to really be the center of this work. Part of that is we have monthly community dinners where Ramsey County people and community come together to build relationships, to information share. Director Pass has several people on her team that are actively out doing community engagement. Director Holly's team of public health responders are spending a lot of their time out talking with communities and individuals, as well as uh, some of the individuals on my team who are helping with some of the logistics are doing a lot to build those relationships with community. And so we continue to invest in this and continue to make sure that community has an opportunity to be heard and engaged in all aspects of the work. Um, um, and it also can be a part of some of the evaluation efforts we're having to ensure that what we're building is actually meeting the needs in the community. Can you kind of tell us what it's, what centering the embedded social workers in this space has meant in a practical level when those calls come in? 
I, I can um, thank you for the question. As mentioned, we were transferring calls from the ECC to crisis um, for some time. And there's, um, w when doing that, there's a question always of what happened? Did the, what, what, what next? And there wasn't an opportunity to do the, that when we were separate. We always want to be mindful of privacy and our HIPAA laws, but by embedding staff together, what we've seen is a level of trust where I may not know exactly how the call ended or if someone went out, but I now know you. And because I know you, there's a level of trust that's been built where I, can, I, I know that it was handled appropriately. So it's about that proximity and really building relationship. We have seen um, an increase in even calls, again, transferring, but that trust in knowing that it was handled appropriately. Yeah, I would just uh, add to that. I mean, our staff has, we train together, we sit together, we have meals together. Um, to having that trust and ability to have that formed relationship has really made an impact, I believe, on our staff. Um, and so I think it's been an excellent partnership, something that as Sophia, uh, uh, Director, Deputy Director, excuse me, Thompson stated, um, in the beginning, it was hard for our staff because it was, it's it's kind of been ingrained into our stat, into our brain that it's we need the fastest response all the time, and I don't think that's necessary, right? I think it's time for us to say what's the most appropriate response, but still do it in a timely manner. And so transferring those calls to the embedded social worker to ask and have more time to spend with the caller uh, really does f frame that what is the most appropriate response. Can you remodel the space too, so you can tell us a little bit about what you, what you did here to make the environment better, I guess? Sure, actually, we, uh, yes, thank you for the question. So in our uh, newly remodeled space, we, uh, again, at every level of, uh, of, excuse me, at every level of pulling this team together, our staff uh, had surveys and voted on the color scheme, voted on the flooring, uh, voted on the color of the floor, um, and so we have removed all of our carpet from our space. We have rubberized floor for easy cleanup. We have newly uh, renovated consoles themselves, so there are new furniture out there. Um, we also have um, soundproofing on the walls as well as on the ceilings that absorb 90% of the sound. And so it's a, mo a lot more quiet space. Uh, and it's just a really more modern, clean environment for us. Then if, if someone could walk me through how that works, 911 operator gets a call, then it's like, hmm, got to transfer you to social worker. Or somebody could just walk through how a call comes in, how everything comes So out. when a call comes in, our 911 telecommunicators answer the phone. They go through a series of key questions. And in that process, if it's determined that it's not a crime or not a life safety to self or others, and there's a mental health or uh, substance use element to that, that's when we would tr have it transferred to the embedded social worker. In that time, the embedded social worker will take the information that was received from the telecommunicator and send either a crisis response or a public health response if it's deemed appropriate. Uh, if it's not, where during their triage questions, they had another uh, element that came through, maybe during the questioning, something else triggered them to send a different response or a more traditional response, then they send it back to the dispatcher where they are able to send a police, fire, or EMS response. Thank you for that. I know these are incredibly tough calls. I can't imagine in many cases what you're hearing on the other end of the line. Um, there was a really high profile example just recently of a, a case that ended like some do sometimes. Um, my question is, how are employees in this space cared for? And what happens after a, a, an incident that maybe is really difficult? Thank you for that question. It's very impactful for our staff. Um, they, we have very hard car calls that we take. Uh, we have internal peer support team uh, that is internal with our staff. Uh, that peer support team is trained in multiple different uh, ways of, of working through tough calls. Uh, our shift supervisors are also uh, 
uh, have conversations with employees off the floor. We have quiet room space that was developed by our staff. They pick the furniture, it's their artwork on the wall. They're able to go in and decompress after calls. And sometimes it's a matter of just walking around and needing a break. Um, and then they will come back and, and take the next call. If I could add to that, part of it with you know the appropriate responses initiative specifically is recognizing not only kind of what Director Pass is saying in terms of the impact on call takers, but also uh, our crisis team, embedded social workers, and public health responders who are going out to some of these tough situations. So we're in the process right now of getting some contracts in place for some additional wellness support, both proactive as well as critical incident debriefing to ensure that when some of these tough things come up, that there's an opportunity opportunity for people to connect with either community healers or trained mental health professionals to get some additional support and processing through uh, what happened and what their experience was. Thank you, thank you so much.